welcome back to FRC CC. I'm Adel Amlao Tun and I run this IFRS page. Today we continue our discussion on derivatives and in the previous video we talked about derivatives. We explained how to identify the various types of derivatives. We talked about forwards, futures, options and swaps. And so what we're looking at today is uh, a deep dive into one of those derivatives which is called options. But for the purpose of our learning, we'll be looking at two major types. We are talking about call options and put options. So we mentioned that an option is a derivative that actually gives you the right and not the obligation. But what it does, it gives you the right to make a purchase in the future. That's what an option does. And so we'll be looking at a call option and a put option. And we mentioned that what a call option does is it gives you the right to buy. Just like we mentioned that when you make a call, you make a call to make a purchase. And so when you look at call option in that light, are looking at it in the fact that a call option gives you the right to make a purchase, a right to buy, while a put option gives you the right to sell. Now, but aside from that, when we look at a call option itself, a call option is split into two. A call option can be a purchase option. It could also be a written option. So what that means is that you are either purchasing a call option or you are writing the call option. When you purchase a call option, it means that you are buying it. When you write a call option, it means that you are issuing it, just the way you issue a loan. When you issue a loan, you expect the order of the loan that you actually pay back the order of the loan. Same thing for a call option. When you write a call option, you are saying that you are issuing a call option. And look at practical, practical examples for each of them. That's, we are talking about a call option that could either be a purchase call option or a written call option. And we also look at a put option that could either be a purchased put option or a written put option. Now the reason for this is because for you to be able to account for each of them, you need to understand how they work. If you understand how they work, then you'll be able to apply them on financial instruments. So let's look at the practical scenario that talks about the call option that is a purchased call option. It says here that imagine you are an investor and you purchase a call option on company XYZ with a strike price of $50 and an expiration date of one month. By buying this call option, you have the right, but not the obligation, to buy company XYZ stock at $50 per share within the specified time frame. If the stock price rises above $50, you can exercise the option and profit from the price difference. So what we are saying here is that when you have a call option, like this example, you have a call option to actually purchase the share of a company at $50 per share in the future. Now, what that means is that you've bought that call option, meaning that you've bought the right to buy it in the future. Now, it means that if the price of the share increases in the future, then automatically you make a gain. Because what you have done is you've said that, I want to buy this for $50 in the future, and because you have a feeling that the price of that share will actually rise, if it rises to like $130, that means you are making a gain of $70 each on each of the share that you've bought. That's how a purchased call option work. So let's look at how a written call option works. For a written call option, remember what you are doing is you are issuing that call option. What that means is that you are the writer of the call option. You are the one selling that call option. Now take note that call options and put options, they are not what and opposite. And what I mean by that is the fact that you are buying the call option doesn't necessarily mean that the other party is selling a put option. And that's why you have to understand them individually. An example here says, suppose you are a company that issues stock and writes a call option on your own shares. In this case, you sell a call option to another investor, giving them the right to buy your company's stock at a predetermined price and within a specific time frame. By writing the call option, you are obligated to sell the stock if the option is exercised by the investor. So what you are doing here is that you are writing a call option. And remember, a call means to buy, right? So because you are the one issuing that call option, it means then that you are telling the other party to actually buy from you in the future. And what it means is that you are giving that person the right to buy. And if you are giving that person the right to buy, automatically it means that you have an obligation to sell. The other party might decide not to buy from you. But the major thing is that you've sold that right. That's why it is called a written call option. That is, you have written an option to the person and that person has the right to make a call, that is, to buy from you and you have an obligation to sell 
to that person. Now, because of that, what often happens is that you charge the other party a premium for that service you are rendering to the other party. Okay, so let's look at put options. Like we said earlier, a put option can either be purchased or written. And what that means is that you are either buying the right to sell or you are writing the right to sell. Okay, so let's look at an example of a put option that is purchased. It says here that let's say you own shares of company ABC stock and you are concerned about the potential decline in its value. To protect yourself, you purchase a put option on company ABC with a strike price of $60 and an expiration date of three months. By buying this put option, you have the right, but not the obligation, to sell your shares of company ABC at $60 per share within the specified time period. If the stock price falls below $60, you can exercise the option and limit your losses. So like we said earlier, a purchased put option. Put means to sell, right? Now when you purchase a put option, you are saying that you have purchased the right to sell. The right to sell in the sense that if the prices fall below the amount you have pegged it out, that means you are making a profit because you want to sell at that amount. Meaning that you are looking at the fact that there is a possibility that prices will drop. And because you are a seller, you want to sell at a particular amount so that you can generate your profit. And so what that means is that if prices fall, you are making a profit. But if prices rise, because you have an option not to sell it, then you might decide to just not sell it. And uh, you can actually sell it in the market. So that is what a put option is. A put option, a purchased put option means that you have bought the right to sell in the future. So let's look at what a written put option is. The example here says, consider you are an options writer and you write a put option on company XYZ stock. By doing so, you sell a put option to another investor, granting them the right to sell their shares of company XYZ to you at a predetermined price within a specific time frame. As the writer of the put option, you are obliged to buy the shares if the option holder decides to exercise their rights to sell. So it's more like the call option that we talked about for a written call option. So same thing here for a written put option. Remember put means to sell, right? So what you are saying is that you are giving, you are issuing or writing the right to somebody and you are saying that that party has the right to sell to you. That's a written put option. You are giving that person the right to sell to you. And when you give that person the right to sell to you, what you do is you charge a premium on that because of the rights or the service that you are providing to that person. And what that means is that because that person has a right to sell to you, you have an obligation to buy from that person. Remember, for the call written option, that one is talking about buying. And what that means is that the other party has the right to buy from you and you have the right to sell. But this time around, for a put option, because put means to sell, the other party has the right to sell to you while you have an obligation to buy from the other party and what you do is to charge a premium for the service either a written call option or a written put option the issuer or the writer always charges a premium for the service that they provide and so that's how briefly it works in terms of a call option a put option and uh, whether it is a purchase or a written option i hope you learned something today if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment section i'll read it and i'll attend to them and uh, if you like this video please Put a like, comment, share, and I'll be back for more. Cheers.